I have personally spent enough time while living in the west end of Vancouver, which is the gay mecca of Canada, to understand the LGB community. Well, to be fair, more the G and B and not really the L. And I do have many homosexual and bisexual friends. As well, I lived in Bangkok, Thailand, where there is a massive T community. And it is basically seen as a third sex. I even have regular conversations with a transgender friend of mine that lives in central Canada. Thus, the thing I would like to convey from the outset of this presentation is that I believe all people should be treated equally and with respect. I have, however, been fascinated by not the move for acceptance of sexual minorities, but the celebration, nay, the drunken euphoria and adulation directed toward transgender children, while at the same time the continual denigration of men with slurs such as toxic masculinity. Moreover, the overall psychological brute force being deployed that is attempting to rapidly and radically transform the morals and ethics as well as upend established science in the Western world. Recently, there have been celebrations and accolades heaped on young LGBT celebrities and activists. Jazz Jennings, star of her own TV show, has finally, after much complication as a result of taking puberty blockers and female hormones from such a young age, been able to surgically transition to her preferred gender. A side note that it is ironic that injecting cattle with hormones to increase milk production is now seen as a health negative, but giving them to children is seen as brave and stunning. Anyway, late last year, NBC Nightly News gushed how drag kids are slaying the runway one fierce look at a time, while another drag child, Desmond the Amazing, danced on stage in New York City at a gay bar where adult male patrons tossed money his way as if he were a male stripper. While the Obama-era policy that allowed and promoted transgender students to use the bathroom that corresponded to their gender identity has since been rescinded by the Trump administration, the full acceptance of the transgender, rather than tolerance, is now a central demand of many. So much so that many have now taken to post their preferred pronouns on social media profiles in solidarity for what they see as the ever-blurring lines on what gender even means. And this is all affirmed by the American Psychological Association and for $35 for non-members, you can read the continuing education article Embracing a Gender Affirmative Model for Transgender Youth. However, this same organization does not display the same tolerance I have when I say that all people deserve respect and acceptance for who they are. And as I am sure you have guessed from the title, it is yet again men and traditional masculinity, to be more precise, that this organization has linked to a plethora of actions and attitudes that they claim are harmful. Yes, that's right toxic masculinity has just been given clinical approval. With the radical shift in socio-cultural morals, ethics, and standards that is transforming the societies of the West, the American Psychological Association has seen fit to issue a 36-page document that features the warning that traditional masculine ideology has been shown to limit males' psychological development, constrain their behavior, result in gender role strain and gender role conflict, and negatively influence mental health and physical health. The new guidelines for the psychological practice with men and boys defines masculinity ideology as a particular constellation of standards that have held sway over large segments of the population, including anti-femininity, achievement, a shul of appearance of weakness, and adventure, risk, and violence. The report also links this ideology 
to homophobia, bullying, and sexual harassment. While a 2007 report on girls and women was also published, it focused on the victimization of women and the abuse, oppression, unrealistic media depictions, and limited economic resources they must contend with. This report, however, documents the male privilege that comes at a cost of adhering to sexist ideologies and explains that masculinity represents a set of characteristics that are unhealthy for men. The guidelines for psychologists outlined in the report include encouraging them to understand the impact of power, privilege, and sexism on the development of boys and men and on their relationship with others. The report notes that men commit 90% of all homicides are more likely to be arrested for domestic abuse and are four times more likely to commit suicide than women worldwide. While urging psychologists to recognize and question their own biases when working with male patients, what this report does is further fuel the narrative of traditional masculinity as being toxic and thus somehow wrong, somehow other, and more importantly, not worthy of a $35 continuing education article such as embracing a masculine affirmative model for male youth. What should be obvious and understood is that what is termed toxic masculinity or traditional masculinity, gender roles, and the subsequent behaviors engendered by men and women has been arrived at by human societies across the planet. Leaving out the very visual difference in size and appearance between male and females in thousands of species of animals, from ducks to lions, there are very real and observable differences in behavior between biologically male and biologically female animals based on millions of years of evolution. And which is harder to believe? that the same evolutionary pressures that have created the biological gender differences in animals is completely absent in human beings, or that we too are also the product of evolution, and thus the attributes associated with traditional masculinity, not wanting the appearance of weakness, the seeking of adventure, risk, and violence, that even now, according to the APA, hold sway over large segments of the population, are not based on social constructs alone, but could in fact be based on biological determinism. Is it by accident that almost all human societies, with the exception of the West in very recent times that is horrified by it, are based on patriarchal lines? Along with patriarchy, the violence and aggression of men is also associated with his territorialism, because historically, should groups of men refuse to employ violence when the time came, they would be annihilated, their women appropriated, and their culture and way of life destroyed. Men also have exerted intense territorial emotionalism over their women, probably as a way to ensure he is the father of any children produced by his mate. With regards to risk and adventure, a man who did not risk or seek or take his destiny for himself had much less of a chance to procreate. 8,000 years ago, 17 women reproduced for every man. Taken as a whole today, men now outnumber women on the planet by 66 million. Put another way, if you were a man in China or India and risk nothing, try nothing, do not take what you can, there is a very good chance that you may not marry and will never have children. I dare say that these issues are not solely defined by social constructs and ideologies, but in fact by human evolution. What the study calls anti-femininity, I would venture is nothing of the sort but a preference for women that conform to more traditional gender roles, and that there are real differences in men and women desires, attitudes, and innate interests, none being better than the other, and until recent times would be deployed by both to complement the other in order to work together. Sadly, the relationship between the genders, at least in the West, is under severe strain, but one can still see natural gender roles percolating just under the surface. 
For example, what we see in places like Scandinavia is what is called the gender equality paradox, which is that countries that promote gender equality in these countries, they tend to have less gender balance in fields such as science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM, meaning more men gravitate to these fields, while jobs that are people-centered, kindergarten teachers, caregivers, HR, and so forth, find more women voluntarily seeking out such professions. The idea is that if there is a welfare state to insulate against uncertainty, men and women go their own ways in terms of career development that are, for better or worse, more traditional to their gender. Today, children in Brighton and Hove in the UK are now being taught that both boys and girls can menstruate. Newsweek has explained away the so-called gender myth and why a woman can have a penis. Biological impossibilities, but to think or speak otherwise, is now to be called controversial at best. And now, traditional masculinity, or what is referred to as toxic masculinity, is explained to be not only harmful for the individual, but for society at large. I guess the next logical step and the answer to every problem it would seem these days now is to medicate. How long are we away from estrogen pills for every boy that shows even the slightest sign of toxic masculinity bubbling just under the surface while interacting on the playground with other children. Don't laugh. Sarcasm today somehow has a way of becoming received wisdom in our modern culture in very short order. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing. Also hit the alert bell to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also find Black Pigeon on the usual social media. Till next time.